大家好，也就在刚刚，即美国东部时间十二月十三日的上午十点钟以后，美国的能源部长格拉赫姆在美国的劳伦斯利弗摩尔国家实验室举办了一场重大科学突破的媒体说明会。这个说明会的主题呀、啊，被称之为“突破二十一世纪最令人印象深刻的科学壮举之一”。它也被誉为美国。核聚高能的科学里程碑，它的名称啊就叫做“净能量争议的聚变效应”。这个项目啊已经投入了十亿美元，其目的啊就是为了复制在太阳上产生能量的核反应，梦想着产生无限廉价清洁的新能源。自1950年以来啊，全世界的科学家们一直都在追逐这个无碳能源的圣杯。不过，这一科学家们。梦寐以求的、希望攀登的高峰，已经被美国劳伦斯国家实验室的科学家们实现了重大的科学突破。他们不仅制造了世界上最大的激光器，以此呢来重新产生使聚变用于能源生产所需要的规模反应。更重要的是啊，他们还将这种反应转化成为可实际部署到电网的电能机器。简单讲就是，他们依赖于。以极高的速度将两个原子粉碎在一起，并将反应产生的能量转化为电能，为家庭和办公室供电，而不会呢产生碳排放到空气中，或者呢将放射物倾泻到环境中。归结为一句话，就是把一个是否可能的问题变成了一个关乎时间的问题。就这么一项世界性的科学创新，全人类的。能源变革以及全球性的工业革命的科学创举，在美国人看来呀、啊，却把这个场面搞得十分简单。我呢，把这个说明会啊总结出了六大特点。第一呢，就是在一个简单再简单不过的小会议室里举行；第二呢，就是能源部长带着四个助手，多余的人呢一个没有；第三呢，就是整个会议啊也没有一个主持人。也没有一个欢迎词。第四呢，就是所有的人直接捞干货，讲出科学发明的关键所在。第五呢，就是国家能源部长与科学家们呢都是平起平坐，没有什么彼此之间的界限。第六呢，就是这个说明会啊，必有记者的提问，而且呢，所有参加会议的专家和能源部长必是啊有问必答。不过我还是认为啊，这场说明会其中的干货真的不少。之前呢，我已经对这个科技项目和这个所在的实验室啊做过五期的专门报道。这个呢，也只是算给大家做一个前期的知识普及。所以从这期节目开始啊，我就专门给大家介绍一下参加这次说明会的能源部长以及几位专家们，他们在这个会议上到底说了些什么。当然，第一期啊，我们还是首先介绍美国能源部长格莱赫姆，他在这个会议上到底讲了些什么。在听这个能源部长他所讲的内容之前呢、啊，我们先了解一下这个美国的能源部长究竟是什么样的背景。美国能源部长的全名叫做 j e n n i f e r 格兰赫姆，他是一九五九年出生的，他是美国民主党的政治家、律师、教育家、作家。和政治评论员，他在一九九九年至二零零三年担任了密西根州的律政厅长，二零零三年至二零一一年担任了第四十七任密西根州的州长，也是首位啊女性的密西根州的州长。看来呀、啊，他的成长经历的确不简单。下面呢，就让我们听一听他究竟讲了些什么。Today we're here to talk about fusion. Combining two particles into one. Last week, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, scientists at the National Ignition Facility achieved fusion ignition, and that is creating more energy from fusion reactions than the energy used to start the process. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is 
one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Or as the president might say, <laughs> right? <laughs> I do think he probably did say this is a BFD. <laughs> Researchers at Livermore and around the world have been working on this moment for more than 60 years. So what does this accomplishment do? Two things. First, it strengthens our national security because it opens a new realm for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deter deterrent in an age where we do not have nuclear testing, ignition allows us to replicate for the first time certain conditions that are found only in the stars and the sun. And the second thing it does, of course, is that this milestone moves us one significant step closer to the possibility of zero carbon abundant fusion energy powering our society. If we can advance fusion energy, we could use it to produce clean electricity, uh, transportation fuels, power heavy industry, so much more. It would be like adding um, a power drill to our toolbox in building this clean energy economy. So today we tell the world that America has achieved a tremendous scientific breakthrough, one that happened because we invested in our national labs and we invested in fundamental research. And tomorrow, we'll continue to work toward a future that is powered in part by fusion energy. Fortunately, private sector investment in fusion research is already booming. It has reached nearly $3 billion in last year alone, and we've heard from professors that interest among students has never been higher, which is terrific. And that's why the Biden-Harris administration is aiming to capitalize on this moment. Today's announcement is a huge step forward uh, to the president's goal of achieve, achieving commercial fusion within a decade. But there's still a lot more to do so much more. We'll continue to work uh, toward that goal and find other ways to progress to reach fusion energy. So for example, in September, the Department of Energy made a $50 million investment for public-private partnerships to start working toward uh, fusion pilot plant designs. And we're partnering with the Office of Science and Technology Policy to map out the president's bold vision for driving that commercial fusion in the next decade with the highest safety standards, with cost-effective, equitable uh, deployment that positions American businesses to lead and communities to thrive, and with a skilled workforce that's diverse and inclusive. This is what it looks like for America to lead, and we're just getting started. Another big congratulations to Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Their team is here. Where are you, team? There you are. Uh, and they'll be, yes. <laughs> they'll be joining us uh, after this for a technical panel for those of you who wish to stay uh, to learn more. Um, big applause and thank you to the NNSA, the National Nuclear Security Administration. <laughs> and everybody who has been involved in this fusion breakthrough that will go down in the history books. You're going to hear more about the details of the experiment from Administrator Ruby and Director Budil. But first, I'm going to turn it over to the President's Science Advisor and Director of the OSTP, uh, Dr. Arati Prabhak. 